everyone to the Roll for Initiative podcast, Volume 7, Mini Issue 11. This is DM Matt, and in this mini issue, we're going to go to one of the interviews I conducted at Gen Con with David Reed, the CEO of Meta Arcade. Meta Arcade is the uh, company behind the iOS and Android app, uh, Tunnels and Trolls Adventures, that lets you play some of the classic solo adventures from Tunnels and Trolls. Um, they bring that tabletop experiences to your uh, phone and tablet. So I got to sit down and talk to them, some Tunnels and Trolls, as well as the software behind making the app that they're going to release to the public so people can make their own adventures for it. So let's go to that interview, and when we come back, I will sit down and give my review of Tunnels and Trolls Adventures after having sat down and played with the app for a while. This is DM Matt here, and I am now with David Reed of Meta Arcade, and we're going to talk some Tunnels and Trolls Adventures here. So we got Tunnels and Trolls Adventures here, and uh, just tell us more about it. Sure. So uh, you know, as you said, we're with Meta Arcade, and, and what we've really done here as part of bringing Tunnels and Trolls to life digitally is we built a platform that will allow anybody who can write a story to create and publish their own RPG adventure, but any technical artistic skills required playable on mobile and computers for free. And that's the platform that, that you and I are looking at right now, and we'll show you more of this. But it's the same tech that we are using to bring the Tunnels and Trolls adventures to life. The idea really started, for me, I, I wanted to, I've been in games a long time, but it was time to make something, and felt like, well, if I'm going to be part of the creation process, I'm not technical anymore, yeah. I've never even been a little bit artistic, what could I do? Well, I could still write stories. I mean, here we are at Gen Con 50, thousands of people here write adventures, I'm one of them. I could write adventures. If I could find a way to get the art, get the audio, and turn that into something digital, that would be a lot of fun. So that became the process of thinking about the platform and then in parallel working with the folks buying Tunnels and Trolls because that's a game that, as you know, right, it's been out for over 40 years. It always was born from the idea of you know, when Ken designed Tunnels and Trolls, it was a bit of a reaction to the complexity of original Dungeons and Dragons with movement rates and tabletop yeah. wargaming it things. A, it was a war game. It was a war game with some role playing thrown on top of it. Exactly. And Ken had the he, he was like, "Wow, why is all this difficulty getting in the way of the role playing? That's the cool part." Yeah. So created something that would play more like a Marvel comic read. You know, combat was fast and exciting. Characters had interesting, difficult narrative dilemmas to go through, and so that led to Tunnels and Trolls being not just a, a streamlined system, but also one that lent itself very well to solo adventures. And so that became where Tunnels and Trolls really got famous, was the 40-plus adventures they published over the 40 years. So being a lifelong fan of both games, I realized, hey, we could do something interesting digitally with Tunnels and Trolls, emulate that solo adventure system, and over time build a creation platform where people could effectively make Tunnels and Trolls solo adventures with art, with audio, publishable to the digital platforms and such. So that's how we got to where we are now. <laughs> right. And then and then with this, it the model is it's a free to play. Uh, right. but, and the, but then if you want to buy the game, you can just buy it out unlimited, but then you can all it's also ad supported as well. So you can free play, watch a few videos, and then so that's the model you're taking? Exactly. And so, you know, at, for example, right, we, we launched yesterday uh, on the App Store and Google Play with five adventures plus a tutorial. Now, the tutorial and Naked Doom are completely free to play. You never have to watch an ad. You don't spend any money. Just play a thousand times if you want to and you're good to go. The other adventures, basically, what we've done is a, a bit of a dual currency model. So if you want to spend, and we give you an allotment of what we call hearts when you first play the game. We give you 20 hearts, and a heart is like a quarter at the arcade. Play the game once. If you win, if you die, if you abandon, whatever it is, you've spent that heart. And if you want more hearts, well, you can buy them. If you'd rather not spend money, just watch ads. Every ad you watch is a heart. We don't put an ad in the game itself. We don't interrupt the narrative. We don't have banners all over the place. It's just your choice to watch an ad and go from there. 
But what we are hearing at Gen Con is a lot of people, they're used to buying adventures. They'd rather just buy them. And so you can buy these, you know, the three mini solos that we launched with yesterday are all a dollar each. Uh, Buffalo Castle's a few bucks. And our intention is to keep these prices down because part of what goes wrong in video games a lot of times is the cost of making this stuff is so high. We found a way by using the art and the audio and then the story from other people, right. we can keep those costs down at a decent level. Right. You're just licensing already created content to put it in a digital form so you don't have to hire new artists and hire new writers. You're taking content people already love and just bringing it to a different platform. That's exactly it. And, I mean, I think about Tunnels and Trolls, and I've played this game for years, and these adventures, I mean, some of this stuff is really, really good, and yet so many people here have never played it, right? right. And a lot of people aren't necessarily, as much as tabletop is enjoying this huge resurgence right now um, there are a lot of people who just simply aren't playing these games on tabletop but if you give it to them digitally I mean certainly I had that own experience in my own kids right of I couldn't get them to do anything with me on a tabletop but I put this thing on a tablet for them and they were yeah. doing it all night so right. that's exactly the idea here all these adventures that came out all these years ago that are just really important seminal adventures that I think everybody should play now you have a chance to do it for free on mobile right. it just reaches a whole new audience it wouldn't otherwise even maybe even come to Gen Con but they stumble across it in the place or the app store. You got it, exactly. Right. And then with this too, it, it with the platform you're creating, you're, you're going to also allow other people to create and share and also make a, or monetize. Absolutely. So, so you know, like like you said, and we'll, we'll go ahead and flip over to the creator again here. Basically, you know, the monetization model, as you say, like we, you know, it's great if people want to buy stuff. It's great if they don't and they just watch ads. And that monetization model will carry on to the creator. So what you're looking at here is, is the next adventure we are publishing next week. So we intend to get one out a week. This one is called Stop Thief, and it was written by Michael Stackpole, who a lot of people will know is a Star Wars novelist and a New York Times bestselling author, and his work with Shadowrun and Battletech in recent years. But he got his start at Flying Buffalo writing Tunnels and Trolls adventures. And all of his adventures were set in the city of Gull, which is a fantasy city with a very vibrant criminal underbelly. Uh, in this particular adventure, Stop Thief, you are hired by the magnate of a shipping fleet to investigate who is stealing all his stuff. And so here is how this adventure flows. And each of these boxes you see is what we call a frame. Uh, and that is a frame is how it will look on the screen, right, is when you see something. Now, I know your, uh, your listeners can't see, but uh, for you, right, these purple lines are paths that you choose. Okay. Right? Pick a path. Green and red are conflict paths. Green indicating success, red indicating failure in a world where you have to make a saving roll or win a combat. Okay. And if you win the combat, it's green. If you make the saving roll, it's green. Or if you fail either of those, it's red. And this is just how the adventure flows. So we'll just pick one of these frames out and we'll show you, like, as an example here. Okay, so, you know, number one, you have your text and you enter in your storyline in each of these frames. Number two, you have your art. And so each of these frames has an art image. Uh, we have an archive of a couple thousand images now, mostly from the 40 years of Tunnels and Trolls. Uh, sometimes, you know, we've, we've started to license stuff from other sources and things. And then similarly, each frame you have audio in effects, right? So you can play you can play music here. And so I'll, you know, this particular frame, you're in a, a tavern. So let's see if I can get it. You also have the ambient noise for the tavern. So let's play that. So you can hear the fireplace roaring, the, the patrons chattering, the occasional plate clinking and things like that. And then a lot of times there's a sound effect, right? So the sound effect could be all kinds of stuff, right? Here's the... That's the Buffalo Stampede in Buffalo Castle. Or, uh, you know, if you are gambling with somebody and they're flipping a coin... Uh, you know, you get new com or oh, here you go, getting getting thrown into jail. You know that that kind of thing. Now in the bar, it's more likely that you're drinking something, so uh, we'll put a drink effect in there, and and there you go. So. And each of these things, you can add different elements. You can add combat, you can add saving rolls, you can give people items, you can take items away. And to that end, what I'll show you, so we'll, we'll make our own little space here, right? And what I what we did, we demoed the creator for the first time at PAX South in San Antonio in January. And as we were doing this in the booth, and a lot of people were like, wow, that's cool. I, uh, hey, do you want to make something? Yes, I do. What do you want to make? I don't have any idea. No problem. Go into the art area, hit a random image, and, well, look at this, uh, you know. And we'd say, okay, what's happening here? And it's like, well, okay, you, all right, let me start entering some text for you. You stumble into a room filled with treasure and a cat idol. 
the cat attacks. <laughs> All right, so just to make a simple little adventure here, and so now what's going to happen is you're going to have to have a fight. And so looking at a fight here, right, there are monsters. And we've got an array of monsters coming right out of Tunnels and Trolls. But if you'd rather create your own, which you'll do for a boss monster or an important non-player character thing, you can do that. But since we are fighting a cat, I know we have a saber-toothed cat. So let's just go ahead and put that guy in here. And so now you're going to fight a single saber-toothed cat. And what you'll see in the platform, right, yeah. is it automatically spawns a victory and a defeat frame for every combat. It automatically spawns a success and failure roll for every saving throw. Now, in the case of a combat, typically we, we assume you die, right? I'll show you that again real quick. So, And we assume you close the book and that's the end of your adventure. Uh, you could change that if you wanted to. If you wanted the, the loss in combat to be more of a you've been captured or, you know, something like that, not a problem. But since we're going to assume you died in this thing, we'll go ahead and we'll pick a little death adventure or death image. This one being my favorite. And we'll put a, uh, a death stinger in there. Let's play that. All right. So that's what's going to happen when you die. Uh, all right. That's all good. Now, back here to the success. All right. So you can see that's our defeat frame. Here's our victory frame. You were victorious. And so we got to get a spell checker in there, right? That's one of the... And you take a bunch of gold. All right. So now what we can do is we can show you how... You can give items and take items for players. You can change your attributes. You can put achievements in here. Uh, but we'll just give you a pile of gold right now. Yeah. And we'll make that the successful completion of our adventure. So, you know, not the most uh, scintillating narrative we've ever seen. But, you know, here we go. We have our own little adventure now. And we'll start playing it from here. So part of what we've got to do as we take this thing out for commercialization is, you know, in addition to things like getting the spell checker and the text thing when you're typing, is have a way so that when you're previewing your adventure, you just dive right to it. Because right now we've, we spin up the whole app, and, okay, that's, that's a little cumbersome, but we'll get there. And so now what you're going to see is we're just going to play what we just made. Right, just minutes ago we had this. And now we're going to have to fight that saber-toothed cat. And, uh, wow, this is actually a tougher fight than I thought it would be. Lots of dice running across the screen. But I uh, I think we've got the advantage here. I think we will win this fight. Oh, yeah. Now, one thing that changed uh, from people who played in the beta is we've now added spike damage into the game, which is a deluxe tunnels and trolls rule that it reflects the fact that combat is always dangerous. And even if you're well overpowered, you're in, your opponent for every six they roll you inflict at least one point of damage. So even though you won every round, you still took some damage. You're victorious, you take a bunch of gold, and that's the end of your adventure. So like I said, not the best narrative we've ever seen, but it just kind of proves the point of how quickly you can make something, how easily you can do it with art and audio. This is exactly what we want to let people do this winter. Yeah. yeah something I was just thinking of, if someone were to make like a story arc, is there a way to have your character and the items that they may acquire carry over from one to the other? They already do. They already so do. when you when you so what we're looking at here with this character Borgon, um, here's the stuff that he's acquired in different adventures. Now, you also when you go into your inventory outside of an adventure, you know you have the ability to sell stuff, and uh, you know oh, wow, okay, Borgoth has accumulated quite a bunch of stuff here, right? So oh. you know may as well just sell some of that stuff because yeah, he's rich. Yeah. You know, <laughs> clean, clean out some of these things because all these weapons we don't need. But but that is exactly what happens, right? So you go through this process of accumulating weapons and armor and loot, and you're able to take those with you. Yeah, I see he's got. I keep making these little mini adventures where he gets a thousand gold, so he's getting rich. Now, right. right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, here's the Medusa Sprays, what he probably, uh, I mean, certainly got in Buffalo Castle as an example. Yeah. And so, yeah, that is exactly the kind of thing. So what you could do as an author, you could put an item in an adventure that you must have to get into a place in the next adventure and things like that. Yeah, if you didn't get the gold key, you can't go through the gold door, that kind of thing. Okay. Very nice. Uh, when will the, the, the app is... Uh, Tunnels and Trolls Adventures is out, but when will the crea uh, creator be out? Yeah, our plan is this winter, and I use that term yeah. fairly broadly because, you know, it's a little indie team of five guys now. But this winter, our plan is to put the game, the Tunnels and Trolls Adventures, that's on mobile now, and all the adventures that come out from there, put it out on uh, PC, Mac, and Steam, and then begin a closed beta of the adventure creator at that time. So that we'll start with some people who are known entities that we know will not 
create adventures full of hate speech and objectionable content and whatnot. And then from there, once we get a rhythm of the tools and understand what authors need, then we'll go into the closed beta and bring in even a bigger group of people okay. to start making stuff. And is the plan to uh, also have the adventures be accessible, accessible through the Steam Workshop once it's launched on Steam? Ah, so it's interesting. I... There's something to do with Steam Workshop. I haven't quite figured out what yet. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> clearly you've got millions of people who are already creating things there. Right. Right. And similar to the idea, look, we're we're very focused on narrative right now, but why not focus on art as well? Let everybody who creates art on Deviant Art upload their art into the platform, and then when somebody uses their illustrations, they get credit and they also get some of the share, the revenue share. Right. right? Um, Steam Workshop is very much that kind of a model. There is something to do there, right? And maybe it's simply putting it in Steam Workshop, and then people who use Steam Workshop can submit their creations and their assets that way. Have to think a little bit about how it works, but absolutely right. what we want to do. Yes, awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you absolutely. here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we are back, and now I'll give some general thoughts and impressions on the Tunnels and Trolls Adventures app. When you first will launch Tunnels and Trolls Adventures, you're brought up to a screen that has all the adventures you're able to partake on. Uh, it, ha it has a small tutorial, which really I don't think most people need, really. If uh, I found that I was able to just jump straight into one of the main adventures and play through it and, and understand what was going on. But the tutorial is there. Uh, in the app right now, they have three full adventures and in a lot of other mini adventures. The three full adventures are Naked Doom, Overkill, and Buffalo Castle. With this game, the way it's run is you have 20 hearts. Those are like your lives. Every time you die in an adventure, you lose a heart. When you're out of hearts, you can't play that adventure anymore unless you get more hearts, which you can either buy them through the app, or you can watch uh, YouTube ads, and you'll gain more hearts that way. The Naked Doom is actually free to play, as David said in the interview. You just played as many times as you want. No ads, no heart loss, anything. Just played as much as you want. The other ones, you will lose your hearts, and you will have to watch ads or spend money to buy more. Or you can actually just buy them, buy them outright. Uh, they range anywhere from... They they decided to go for microtransact, like, for their own currency, as opposed to just saying, like, the adventure costs $4. You buy gems. The gems, then, you can purchase your adventures for. So, like... Overkill is like the biggest adventure they have. It's 50 gems, which actually in the store is like $4.99. So $4.99, you get Overkill and you get to play it as many times as you want. Uh, Buffalo Castle's 40 hearts. Uh, I really kind of wish instead of using hearts, it was just a cash option because it's just a little awkward where I'm like, hey, I want to buy this app or adventure. So I have to go into the store. Uh, buy hearts, and then I go back into the app to convert my, or not, I'm not buying hearts, but buying the gems. And then from there, take go back into it, buy the, and take the gems and buy it. I wish I could just skip that extra step there and just go straight from, I want to buy this, I bought it. Um, then there's also all the mini adventures. Right at the time of this recording, there's actually seven mini adventures uh these are just little short ones you could play through rather quickly but they're all like classic tunnels and trolls adventures and they're actually fun to play through i had some and they all run like 10 gems which is 99 cents so 99 cents you buy yourself some mini adventures then you also in this you have the ability for character creation um, down at the bottom of the screen, like you'll have it'll show like whatever characters currently loaded in their race class. Uh, like in this game, you can have like dwarves, elves, humans, hobs, and then you can take that character and you level them up through playing the adventures. You get gold, you get weapons and items, experience. You level them up. 
and then you can go into the other adventures. Because some of these adventures, if you just start the game, you have no hope of actually being able to get through. Because not all of these adventures are made for level one characters. They're made for higher level characters. So that means you have to play other adventures to level your character up or play the same adventure over and over and over to level your character up to where you can play some of the others. So Yeah, because there's some of the higher level ones. It's like you should be around like level 15. So that would be a, a lot of play if through the others' adventures just to be able to have a chance of getting through it. So that's something to be mindful if you decide to actually start like buying or playing adventures. It may not check the level in the description of it because otherwise you may not have a character high enough to actually even play through it. Uh, and then you could just lead yourself to a bunch of frustration and you burn through all your hearts or you end up uh, having to watch a lot of ads to play through an adventure that you really don't have any chance of getting through just because you're not high enough. So be mindful of the character level with the adventures. Uh, but th that said, I mean, it is a it's a fun little app. It's a nice way to play all those solo adventures for Tunnels and Trolls. Um, it's a very good translation. Uh, when you go to make a combat or a skill check, you see the big Mondo six-sided dice roll across the screen. It does all the math for you. Uh, so it makes it a nice little fun way to play those uh, old Tunnels and Trolls adventures. And it's a great way, if you've never played any of these. It's a great way to just try them out since you don't have to spend any money to play them. You could just go use your hearts, watch some ads. But if you want to buy them, you can absolutely buy them and just play them over and over, which is what I did for a few of them. Um, I had some Google credits, so I'm like, oh, here, I'll go and buy some of these uh, adventures and play through them. And it makes a good time. I, I enjoy the app. It's For what it's doing, it's actually really well done. Um, it has... The artwork from the original uh, modules. So you get the original artwork, uh, and it's just it's a nice experience. I, I, if you have any interest in tunnels and trolls, I mean, I recommend checking it out. I mean, really, I mean, it's free. I at least check it out and see if it's something you enjoy. It's considering some of the other game, freemium games out there when it comes to you're just sitting there really just clicking, pushing the same things over and over to grind out levels so they can hopefully trick you into giving more money. I think this actually gives you a better value than some of those games. As for the long-term replayability of it, uh, it's going to run into the same problem of any like solo adventure or program style adventure that you run eventually with enough plays you'll have exhausted every option you had to play it and you'll know what to do and which trap where the traps are which how to get all the magic items to get the power ups and all that do you lose some of the surprise but that's kind of just a side effect of just that this type of choose your own adventure genre uh, that said, the large missions or adventures, they actually have multiple endings. So you can try to go through and get all the various endings. And actually, it would be nice if there was a way to track which ones you got. So you can kind of have like the achievement of you've completed all like 14 or 15 endings of this adventure. So that that could be something that maybe added in just to give it a little more... Uh, something to strive for as opposed to just trying to play through to completion, try to play through and get all the different outcomes. Um, and it would be nice also if the adventures themselves actually were, you could kind of sort them by level. So that way you know, oh, I have a character that's second level. Which adventures are are appropriate for them. As if, so that way you don't trounce them into something where they're just going to die a horrible death repeatedly over and over, which actually in a way is kind of very old school. So it's almost apropos that your character just dies repeatedly. But yeah, it would be nice to actually know, sort, be able to sort by level and just make that a little more transparent to know, Hey, I'm going to jump into this. Is this something my character can handle? Uh, 
But again, those are just little nitpicks. But overall, I do really like the game and recommend checking it out. So with that, this is DM Matt saying keep it original, keep it old school, and good night, everyone. Furniture Podcast is part of the Wild Games Productions Network and produced for entertainment purposes only. All other uses are prohibited. If you'd like to contact us, go to rfipodcast.com, click on contact us, or email us at rfistaff at gmail.com. Voicemail line 5708654210. Facebook.com slash rfipodcast for more. Bye.